Hi hey y'all, welcome to my uh, wood preparation area. I want to talk to you a little bit today about uh, preparing wood for wood turning. It, it's an essential skill for wood turners because most of the time green wood comes, us, comes to us in the, in the form of logs. So I want to uh, share with you a few of the tips and things that I've learned over the, over the years. Well, I made a great haul today. It's a rainy day in Georgia, but, and I had a wood turning uh, workshop up in Gainesville, and I came back with this load of uh, some nice pieces of ash, a piece of cherry, and a piece under there of what uh, we think may be box elder. All right, I want to show you just a few of the uh, implements of destruction that I put together when I get ready to do a lot of uh, uh, woodstock preparation outdoors, starting with, of course, uh, ear protection and eye protection for the chainsaw. I'm not really going to talk much about chainsaws. Uh, uh, Robo Hippie's got a really good good video on on chainsaw chainsaws uh, for wood turning. But I guess the one point I'd want to make is sometimes uh, if if you're going to be doing a lot of it, buy a good one and it'll pay over the long long haul. A cheaper one will tend to, to fail on you. Um, and they also tend to be a, a lot lighter and a, a bigger chainsaw with a little more power uh, will certainly make you make it easier and, and more fun and that of course wood turning ought to be about the fun I had a cheap cheaper chainsaw and I had it for several years until I finally I think I wrote an article made some money and I thought what can I buy that would put a smile on my face and I decided to get a chainsaw I wouldn't get into the details of, of uh, Ford versus Chevy on on the models but uh, I got a nice one and I'm real real happy with it so some of the items we've got I've got various templates just kind of help me size the outside of wood I got a tape measure, got various marking implements, a uh, piece of chalk from my granddaughters is, uh, is handy, a light, a light colored one, but I've also found you can pick up from the big box stores uh, what they call uh, lumber chalk, which is uh, uh, very nice, and for white wood, this works great on darker wood, for light colored wood I find a, a large king size sharpie uh, works real well. I've got some anchor seal uh, in my container with a, with a brush that I seal it with afterwards, of course i got got some... Uh, gasoline for the chainsaw. So let's get started. Okay, this is a nice piece of uh, cherry I got. Let's assume for a moment, and I say assume because this is not where the pith is, but let's assume that that's where the pith is. If that's the case, you've got two ways of of cutting this, this blank if you're cutting this primarily for bowls. If you want deep bowls, you'd cut it this way, and it's, and it's symmetrical and balanced, and you'd get two deep bowls. If you want... Uh, a larger bowl and a uh, you you would cut it this way and this would be one bowl blank and then this would be the other bowl blank but as it turns out uh, I'm assuming I, I said if the pith were here this is a crotch uh, I'll be able to show that to you in a little bit but so there's a pith here and there's a pith a little bit hard for me to spot I think it's right about right about here. So there's there's some what we call figure or feather through the middle of this so ideally I've, I've got a couple of choices I could I, if I made this into one blank I'd probably wind up losing most of this as I cut through it but if I cut through the middle here and have a crotch I could make a large platter maybe a couple of large platters uh, to take advantage of some of that that figure uh, and or I could make a large bowl but chances are if I made a bowl I'd cut through most of that figure from that crotch so uh, to, my plan would probably be make a smaller bowl and with a shape like this which is not the way you'd normally cut one of these and that way the figure in that in that bowl would wind up falling along the edge on the inside of, of the bowl. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with this yet, but those are a couple of options. Okay, here's a piece of uh, ash which has uh, got very prominent uh, grain growth. Uh, you can see there's already some cracking here, but it turns out that's fairly uh, superficial. I've also got a little bit of a crack here. Uh, I think when I cut back in probably a couple of inches, that'll probably disappear. Uh, but I do, if I turn the bowl, I've got to eliminate that, that pith or, because that's where cracking tends to start. Now, this was not cut ideally. I didn't split this, and the person that did uh, 
cut it as an experienced bowl turner so I suspect there was some damage or some reason why he cut it this way but you can see here from the growth rings that it's the, the it's not symmetrical cut in this way whereas if he had cut yellow jacket if he'd cut it through right through the pith he would have had a large bowl and a small bowl uh, and they would have both been symmetrical uh, so as it turns out when you turn this, you're not going to get an optimum pattern in the bottom of the of this particular bowl. Chances are, I, I'm not. I don't. I think I will probably wind up breaking this down into spindle stock. Here's another piece of wood, and here's another accessory I didn't talk about. A brush sometimes to help clean clean the dirt and dust off of it. It'll help you chainsaw, make it a little easier sometimes to evaluate the uh, wood. This is a piece of box elder. It has no color in it, so. Uh, it's not as desirable as some, but box elder tends to be fairly light colored and um, and it lends itself to uh, dyeing. It's a fairly soft wood. Uh, might make some nice hollow forms. So uh, here is the center. It's uh, I think uh, it might be a possibility for me to make a platter out of it. So let me just show you a typical way how how I would uh, mark up a piece of wood uh, for a common way to break it down. So this being the pith, let me get a, a measure. So I'm going to look for the most uniform uh, direction of the grain and that appears to be, here's the center. So first thing I'd probably do is cut off these sides, top and bottom because it'll just make it, it's going to get turned away anyway. It makes it a little easier to cut the blanks on the uh, chainsaw and, and to mount them. Uh, I think I'd, I'd consider making a, a platter out of one of these blanks. So I would come in here and make, this would make a very nice platter blank. And that still leaves me a, a, a very nice bowl blank down here. Uh, the top, uh, I could make, I've got a choice of either making a very large bowl or I could make a smaller bowl and, and possibly another uh, uh, platter or I could uh, turn it into uh, stock for small hollow forms or I could cut it down the middle and I, there's a good chance I'll, t I'll consider making this into a hollow form so what I'll probably wind up doing is cutting it here and that'll that'll leave me two large hollow forms cutting cutting in grain a platter blank and a, and a bowl blank cut here it's a little easier to evaluate the, uh, the crotch on this piece of cherry uh, and identify the pith. So I'm going to put there's a pith here, a pith here. I'm going to line those up. I'm going to saw directly through off just a little bit here. Two lines might give me a better target. Anyway. I'm going to saw right through that pith, and the feather is actually going to be right here in the middle of where the, where the crotch is. Uh, and I'm going to trim off, uh, trim off this side through here and this side through here.
waste any scraps, so I'm taking this piece that I cut off, see if I can at least get an egg blank uh, out of that portion. I got this. This is a tip from uh, Lyle Jameson on trimming bark. Uh, so that's why I bought this. So let's turn on the compressor, plug this thing in, and see what happens. Okay, my air compressor just cut off. So let's give it a shot. Let's say I was knocking off a piece of bark where I was going to put the uh, uh, the live center. Let's see how this how well it's done. Okay, I tried to seal these green blanks as soon as I cut them. Uh, scrap uh, old uh, latex paint will do in a pinch, but it does not do as well. It won't last as long because uh, air moisture will go through it. It uh, anchor seal what is what I'm using a wax emulsion, and, and I get it from uh, at a wood turning symposium from Big Monk Lumber. A number of places they'll buy it by 55 gallon and break it down into drums. It's considerably uh, cheaper. First thing you got to do is you got to clean off the surface. You don't want any sawdust when you're sealing it because it's just going to interfere with the adhesion. So clean the blank pretty good. And then you know I keep this this brush in here all the time, and it never dries out. And then you just liberally. Rub it in good. You're trying to get it into the pores. So I do it both directions. Helps to get a little bit around the edge, half inch, inch or so, including the bark edge. Because that's where most of your leakage is going to take place. And this won't keep it indefinitely. This will only keep it for, it'll extend the life a few more weeks depending on where you keep it. Uh, after I do this, I'm not going to keep these in my air-conditioned uh, basement. They're going to be too dry. I'm going to take them outside and put them in my uh, unair-conditioned uh, garage on a shelf where the humidity will be, be higher down here in, in the Atlanta area. Okay, uh, smaller, smaller little uh, blanks for eggs, ornaments, coffee scoops, what have you. Uh, some of those do fine without it, but since I'm doing this anyway, heck, I might as well take just a moment and just add the ends just to be on the safe side. This is box elder. It's fairly stable. Chances are it won't, uh, it won't crack on me. But you hate to lose wood. And these are these scraps of box elder I got out of cutting the edges off that, uh, that, that log. Okay, that's, uh, that's got all that. And put this back on. It'll be ready for next next time. Oop, got a couple more. I'll come back and do those later. Okay, I just got this huge piece of Osage orange from a friend of mine, Wish, uh, Wes Jones. Uh, it's got a lot of cracks and checks. He turns big things, and he says, you know, you turn a lot of small stuff, so I think you can probably get some good pieces out of here. So that's going to be our test to see if we can do that. Let's see if we can show you just how bad off this thing looks. Uh, it's a nice crotch piece to begin with, but the checks go deep. This is heavy. It took two of us to move it, and it was a strain for me to get it out of my car. Uh, there's cracks that go all the way through the pith, but uh, I think I'm going to be able to save this. I believe he said it's been drying outside for about five years. If I had to load this in my car, I would definitely be doing my recent load, load uh, easy log loader, but I think I'm going to be able to leverage this thing up with this uh, cart, so we'll, 
we'll see if, if I can. get old you got to take care of your back so I'm trying to be careful I'm trying to figure out the easiest way to cut this and I think it's going to be cut it down through the pith here cut off some major pieces and we'll see This is one of the scraps. I'm going to break it down into a two inch, uh, two inch by two inch by maybe 11 inches. So first thing I, since I've got a fairly flat side off the chainsaw, I'm just going to set my fence at two inches, maybe two and a quarter. Give myself a little bit of latitude. Turn on the dust collector and go to it. Yeah. 